When I went to audio engineering school, we worked on a 7.1 LaFont console, which was essentially haunted. The thing had scratchy potentiometers and you'd see level jumping up and down on the meter. There was no sound going to the channels. It was just a mess. And I dreamt of using something really cool like an SSL and especially that little bus compressor in the center of the console, which took all the information in and just smoothed and drove and powered an amazing ready for, you know, I don't know, FM radio <laughs> back then sound. And so that's what I wanted to focus on next in this series of why is everyone obsessed with X tool. So we're going to focus on the SSL G bus compressor, this thing that lived in the heart of that incredible iconic console. If you like these kinds of videos and you want to support me, use an affiliate link. I get a kickback. Um, I'm not sponsored by UAD or that's who I'm going to do the plugin on. So all this is independent. Um, better yet, become a Patreon on my Patreon. I have three amazing patrons and they mean the world to me. Um, so would love it your support either way. Before I get into it, I do want to talk about why I went with the UAD uh, Universal Audio, I guess, digital version. While there are so many amazing emulations of this tool, in fact, one that SSL makes, you've got, you know, uh, Mic DSP, they make uh, one, you've got um, the Cytomic or Cytomic, I don't know, glue compressor. You've got one that uh, Waves do, which everyone uses because it's probably uh, perpetually $29.99. This one's a bit more expensive. I went with the UAD one because I like UAD and they've never really gotten it wrong in my opinion. They've always had a great track record and they've also got some bells and whistles on this thing that I think have made it uh, uh, an even more interesting to dive into tool, namely the sidechain filter. Um, which just wasn't on the original unit. So that's what kind of drew me to using the UAD one. But of course, if you've got something like this, a clone, a McDSP, or the SSL version, you can follow along and probably get just as much out of this as I'm going to get into it going through it, you know, with you here in this video. So enough talk. Let's jump in. So the first thing you'll notice is the skeuomorphic design. We have a VU meter that is registering our gain reduction, right? We have threshold, makeup, attack in milliseconds, release, ratio, an in button, which is basically going to be our bypass. We also have some things that didn't exist in the original unit, the sidechain filter, a HR for headroom, a mix potentiometer, and also this did come in the original unit, apparently. This thing that just fades the song out, which is just I guess some people really like the fade out from these things and don't want to automate it in their DAW. They have it here. So I also want to set the table. This is a VCA compressor. Okay. And if you know anything about VCA voltage controlled amplifier compressors, they are very quick to respond uh, to transients. For that reason, people like them on drums, stuff that has strong transient information. I chose some audio samples that have that because I just wanted to put this thing to the test and um, use it on material that I think would benefit or at least create a good test environment. Now, I'm gonna bypass the tool and play the audio so you can get acquainted with it as you're about to hear it loop over and over for the next, I don't know, 30 minutes. Cool. That bass line, very Patrick Cowley, very Sylvester. I'm kind of waiting for them to break out and do you want to thunk? If you get that reference, let me know in the comments. Now, back to this compressor. It is, I think, needing to be said that from everything that I have read about this thing, it's designed to add glue, right? It's not really designed to add punch and kind of like oomph. It's designed to gel everything together. Remember, this was on the console where you had compressors in line with EQ and all this across however many channels. And this thing was, you know, the piping, the plumbing, all those tracks were going to this thing for that final kind of cohesion. And that's what this thing is designed to do. So I'm going to turn it on and off.
Notice the other thing here is that this needle is barely moving. So we have about one, two, three dB of gain reduction. This is what I've read we have to do with the, the G-Bus compressor. Again, we're not going over. We're not doing crazy stuff. People just tickled that you know VU, that needle. They didn't go crazy with it. Let's talk about the settings as we see them going down left to right, all the way down here. So first off is threshold, okay? Again, you'll notice I don't have it up crazy like this. I'm just moving towards zero. Nothing's happening. Now we get some compression. Minus four, right? Decibels of compression. We can make that up over here with the makeup gain pot. Now, yes, you're hearing some level, but I think I've done a pretty good job of matching the threshold to the makeup such that the sonic differences you're hearing aren't necessarily incurred as a result of a gain difference. It's more the ballistics of this compressor and its effect on the drums, on the bass line, on the percussion, all that stuff. So what do we hear? Let's have a listen. To my ears, one of the things that's the most kind of like, hmm, I think I understand why people love this thing. Listen to what it does to the bass. The bass is more full. The bass almost goes like, oh yeah, you want to, uh, it steps forward. Like, yeah, I'm like me, cool, step forward. Have a listen now that I've kind of tuned your ears to that. To make it very obvious and folks put some <laughs> folks put some good headphones on or some good stereo monitors on okay to really perceive this stuff i'm soloing the bass the patrick cowley bass i'm going to turn the makeup a little bit down because i'm i feel like that's cheating a little bit Low mids are up, mids are up. It just sounds more full and kind of present and pronounced, again, stepping forward. Now attack in milliseconds, pretty simple here, right? This is stepped, 30, 10 milliseconds, three, one, point three, point one. I like to have a slow attack on this stuff, but of course we get more musical the slower we go. We're letting more kind of stuff in, right? We're not. Uh, smushing it down because they have a super quick like boom hammer comes down on the attack let's have a listen to a couple different settings starting at the very slowest ten You get the picture, right? I, I would never, with a compressor like this, you know, you'd really want to let it relax and just kind of work with the music instead of pushing against it. Let's bring it back to 10. I'm not going to disrespect this set of samples I carefully curated. Release, auto, 1.2.6.1.3, 1 .1 auto. I've read the manual on this guy. There's nothing really technical provided about the auto, at least as far as uh, Universal Audio is concerned, their technical writers are concerned. It just says that this was part of the original unit and 
it happens to really kind of benefit and complement the program material. So I've left it on auto, but let's just, because we're here and hanging out and talking and listening, explore the different settings starting with a very quick release. I mean, just listen for going from 1.2 to auto, listen to the dynamism, listen to the, the way the track pumps and moves and how we go from like tight and just kind of like to relaxed and just full of just swagger on auto, starting with 1.2. So a bit of a level difference as well. That's probably going to influence our opinion of those two settings, but we've explored threshold, makeup, attack, release. Let's move on to ratio two to one, four to one, 10 to one. Not a lot of choice here, but I guess this is what it was all about. Just a couple simple parameters in a stepped pot and you just kind of, you know, moved on with your life. I like it at two in my tests, four and 10, depending on the program material might be more beneficial. Let's go through them together, leaving all the settings north of the ratio pot where they are, starting with two. Okay, so again, you're getting the sense here that, that what this thing is designed to do, drive, glue, not punch, you know, popping, moving. So I'm getting cohesion. I think a major reason why if you're considering an SSL clone or whatever, the reason why you might want to think about the UAD one, I don't know if other uh, versions of this have uh, what I'm about to tell you, is a sidechain filter. For those that don't know, the sidechain input is basically the ear of the compressor, what it's listening to. And based on what it listens to, it responds. So in this case, the sidechain input is our filter here, and we can decide what at a frequency level we let the compressor listen to. Now, the reason I have the reason I think they built this here, in addition to it being a competitive advantage for the other clones, like, oh, they don't have the sidechain filter, is because low end typically is the first loudest thing that the compressor is going to react to. And it's going to sometimes cause some pumping or some kind of, I don't know, it just sounds kind of like tight and closed off. Whereas with the side chain on, when you high pass the frequency information of the side chain source, in this case, our track here, you negate the low end from being allowed to influence the compressor. And what that does, in my view, is just it brings the bass back in. We don't get pumping. Everything sounds much more relaxed and the compressor is working less hard. So I'm going to leave the side chain off and then I'm going to move it over here and turn it on. I'm going to start with it off and then on and I'll go back and forth with the in and out the bypass on bypass button. Let's start with it off. Listen for, I think, some pumping and a lack of definition and power in the low end. Bring it all the way to off real time.
So to me, going past 80, heck, going away from off, having the ability to high pass, allowing the highs to pass, the track information from the sidechain detection circuit gives us low end. Also, look at this needle. It's working less hard because there's less low end coming in. It's not having to behave and react and work its kind of stuff to tamp down on the low end. Look at the needle when I bring it all the way to off. Look at how much it's working. compared to this. We don't pass four decibels of gain reduction. We do over here. So the next time you have a sidechain filter for the input of your compressor, consider high passing it. A lot of people do that, and this wasn't around on the original unit. It is on this one. Now I'm gonna be very honest with you. I have read the documentation for this headroom uh, little knob here and you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. I've not really seen a huge benefit to exploring this feature. This did not exist on the original hardware, nor did it exist, nor does it exist, frankly, on the other competitors. Um, even I think the SSL, original SSL version, the plugin that they have, it just seems to maintain, it's there to kind of maintain a reference level and you can feed more volume, initial volume level into this compressor before the kind of compression magic happens, which can add coloration, all that kind of stuff. I did the best I could to kind of test and really understand this thing, and I don't see, frankly, a ton of benefit to it. So I'm gonna leave it alone. But we should talk about the mix pot here because this is another layer of control for you because what you can do is blend the wet with the dry here. And if you want, you can have some very, let's bring the threshold down, okay? Let's bring the makeup up a little bit. Let's really kind of let's say we want to squash stuff okay we'll leave this on auto we'll leave this at uh, we'll put this four to one that's pretty crazy right that's squashed and that's not why i would use it's not the reason i would use the ssl g bus but what i can do now is bring this mix and just blend in the best of both worlds squash it and then just bring the drive with the wet in Do some before and afters. Bring the makeup gain up a little bit because that's not really fair, is it? The before is quite loud. So with around 55, 60% on the wet, dry pot, we have some pretty, I'd say, extreme compression for an SSL uh, G-Bus compressor. But with our wet, dry mix, we can, you know, we can control. So it's not so crazy. We get the best of the dry, the best of the wet, and bring that into taste. Last but not least here is this, frankly, befuddling little auto-fade feature, which does exactly what you think it's going to do. Um, if I leave it here at 20, this represents seconds. I could have a 60 second literal fade out or a one second fade out. Um, so let's click this now as the track is playing and it'll fade out for 20 seconds. That's it. It just fades it out. So this was something that I guess the consoles did that people liked when they were printing their tracks. I don't really know, but it's here in case you really need it. So there, the really weird thing is if you forget that this is on, you're like, where's my track? And even if you press it again, you're like, where's my track? So I think it's, it's a matter of shift clicking, shift clicking auto fade. And then it kind of brings you back around. And that was really confusing me for a long time, which is why I read the manual for the folks here on the channel. So the last thing I want to do is just, I want to bring my settings back here to where I was at the beginning. We'll leave this on. I think I had this on 10 ratio of two side chain was past 80. So what I've done is I've reset my settings so that we are closer to where we started off in the video. Cause I really want to drive home. I think the thing and the, what I'm discovering here is the thing about why people love this is the glue and cohesion, because we have all this transient, rich, crazy information going through this prism and it's kind of treating and smushing and melting everything together 
in a way that I guess, you know, I have to admit is, is very, very pleasing. Listen to its effects here on the drums, which I'm going to be honest, I added a compressor to to make them a bit more spiky. Listen to the way this compressor doesn't really dull things out too much, but it does add some glue such that the peaks aren't too sharp, especially that snare. It doesn't sound so kind of like crisp. The kick is a bit, you know, loud to begin with, but then it kind of mellows out and gets kind of earthy. <laughs> These are all really weird words, but have a listen to what I mean. I'm just soloed this. I'm going to turn the plug it on and off. So the low end of the kick is just a bit more soulful. It's popping out a little bit, but it just sounds like it's got a bit of a polish on it that it didn't have before. So the SSL G-Bus compressor brings things together. Things get along, they gel, they work better together. And I think I understand why this plugin is so beloved and so kind of over emulated and you know, mimicked and copied. I think even Slate has one, which of course Slate has one. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you better understand this compressor, what it's doing and why everyone's after it. Again, if you want to support me, click one of the affiliate links in my description or join my Patreon. I appreciate it as ever. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.